hi everybody and welcome back to Nellie and Ruth Designs. Today I am doing a challenge and let me just bring it up here so I get it right. It's with uh, Create with Scrimping Mommy and it's over at um, Amanda, Create with Scrimping Mommy, her Facebook page. And she has an ATC weekly challenge shapes and themes uh, going on right now. Week one, ATC coin, two and a half inch circle garden theme. So I thought I would participate because I do like Amanda's um, challenges and what she puts out there. And I'm getting my Versafine all over the place here. Um, so this is my one of my ATC cards that I made earlier uh, this morning. I tried some different techniques, and I just wanted to make sure that they were good to go before I showed you. So there's two things I've been wanting to use, but there's one thing first I want to say, and that is I'd like to thank everyone for um, watching and my subscribers for returning to watch. And if you're new to my channel, um, welcome. Uh, I try to give a broad um, crafting, uh, broad crafting procedures, techniques, tutorials um, on here. And if you're new, I'd love to have you subscribe. I try to post three times a week. Um, in the fall and winter, of course, I can post more, but in the summer, there's a lot for me to do outside too. So I do try to keep up at least three times a week, um, just so everybody can see what I am doing in the craft room. So this here, I love making um, ATC cards. Um, and I just think they're a lot of fun. And I, you know, I don't know if everyone makes them the same way I do, but I want to show you how I do it. There's two things that I've been wanting to use um, that I recently purchased. I purchased some watercolor crayons and I used them on this here. And I also, which I'll be using again in this video, and I also used um, some, I say Dinah, it might be Dina Wakely Media uh, stamps. And I really, really, really like these. So I've, I've been very anxious to use these. And this was one of these stamps here in the package. And um, I, used, I used that just to um, give it a test go. So I didn't want to make another one like this. I did want to do something a little bit different. So I went through and I found this floral stamp. And... It's been a long time since I used this. This is a very pretty stamp. So I thought I would make an ATC um, coin using that. So this I'm going to just set right up here in the corner. And the if you want to make this, you will need a two and a half inch circle stamp. This one here is by um, Stampin' Up. And this is a great stamp. If you do not have a stamp and you have a Cricut machine, you can also make your round circles on your Cricut machine. If you don't have a stamp or a Cricut machine, you can find something else. I know in one of my other videos, I just hasn't posted yet. This magnifying glass is two and a half inches. So you could actually put this down on your paper and trace around it and, and cut around that. So there's a lot of different things that you could use if you don't if you don't have a stamp that size. Um, so what I like to do with my coins, I like to make sure that they're nice and sturdy and they really don't bend. So because I'm using watercolors, I cut a two and a half inch circle out of um, watercolor. This is Stampin' Up watercolor paper. Okay. And it's just a heavier, it's a heavier style cardstock. Um, so I cut one circle out of that because I will be using the watercolors. Then I took just a regular piece of, a little lighter weight piece of cardstock. And then 
For the back, I use, this is actually the back of a um, 12 by 12 paper pad. And I keep these because they're a little bit heavier cardstock again. And um, here, I'm taking my light out here. Get that reposition. There you go. Um, and I like to use that on the back. So, and I don't glue, I do not glue these together until the very end. That's the last thing that I do. So I'm going to set these other two pieces over here to the side, okay? And then we're going to work with the watercolor and the stamping. So I just have a plain piece of paper here that I like to work on. Um, and then I'm also going to use, if you're working with watercolor, make sure you use your VersaFine um, because you can get it wet and it won't run. So I'm just going to dab this up again. And I'm going to try to, I was thinking about offsetting it a little bit. You can do it right in the middle if you want to. Um, if you offset it, it just gives it, you know, kind of a another look. But I think I do want to get everything um, in here. So I'm just going to try to guess where it is. And if it's um, not where I want it, then I will just, there you go. That's good. I would just do it again. And then I'm just going to take some of this ink off of this stamp here. It's easier to clean um, if you get most of the ink off. And this looks like I may not even have to really clean it. All right, so I will set that aside because we don't need that any longer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, I want to watercolor uh, the flowers and the leaves. So it, this dries pretty quickly, but I'm just going to give it a little blast of heat. Just because I want to make sure that it is nice and dry. Um, so, these I found in a bookstore, and um, I thought I would try them. I have watercolor paints, but I just kind of wanted to try these crayons. So, I think on this, because here I used the um, pinks and orange and yellows, I think here I'm going to use the blues some blues and purples. Um, I know these are calla lilies and they're usually yellow or they're white, um, but I wanna, I wanna add a little bit more color. So we will just, and I just don't want this, this might be a little too dark, um, that blue. So maybe I can use these colors here. Um, and maybe that's all I'll need. But we can try the blues. Just getting some of this stuff out of my way here that I don't that I don't need. Um, so I think I mostly want these this light blue, and these are new to me, so I'm just I'm just kind of playing around with them to see. Um, this one here, I'm not going to do that heavy. And I do find that um, I have to have a good amount of water here to swish, that, swish it around. And like I said, these are these are new to me, um, so I'm just kind of figuring out. I will go back and put a little bit more blue in there, but I do want it to I want it to dry.
And normally you don't have to use the heat. I'm just using the heat just to speed up the process a little bit um, for the video. And then I'm going to bring some of this purple over. And I do kind of like to um, use a little bit more water and then I can puddle it and kind of blend it up into the other sections as well. And I think I am going to add a third element. I think that's just a little too, a little too flat. And this gets hot, so I'm just going to hold my... Hold it down with this tool. kind of to see if it's dry so I think maybe um, oh, let's see I'm wondering I don't want to add that blue but I'm also wondering if maybe a little bit of white would do um, in this. I'm just trying to figure out white, white may not do anything but I will I'll give it a I'll give it a try. The only thing it might do would be to tone down that blue or make it a little, we'll see, make it maybe a little bit creamier. And again, you can always, we can always stamp another one. So this is just kind of we're just trying to figure this out. Okay, and I am going to, I'm going to leave that like that because I do like that look. I'm just going to blot it a little bit just to take a little tiny bit off. 
And I think when we get the other colors in there, um, that'll look nice. So then I'm going to use the, the lighter shade of green here. I'll just do a spotty a little spotty shade of dark green there. And I don't mind if I color outside the lines a little bit. I think it gives it a, um, just a fun little look. There. And then we've got the under. Um, so this is kind of, I don't know if this is, that's a like a orange. Um, I want to do a brown, so I'm gonna just grab my other watercolors. And I just want to do a little bit of a brown underneath here. Um, so let's set these right here. And let's do a this little circle here And I'm just going to blot that. And then this here, this is a um, a closed um, flower that hasn't opened yet. So, and then we have the little inside. I may do a little um, inside, maybe just to add a little color. Um, maybe a little pink. All right, that's good. And then we're going to go back and I think we will do... What color shall we do for the closed bud? Um, probably purple, maybe, because um, looks like the purple is on the outside, so we can we'll add some purple. Okay, all right, I think that's good. All right, so that's pretty. That's kind of fun and decorative. So again, I'm going to 
put my pencils, my crayons over here. And I'm going to dry this a little bit. Yeah, I like that. All right. Okay, so next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these all together now. Um, and then I will add the... What I did with this one, I added the gold first. And I could add the gold first. Um, But I think what I'll do is I'm going to add the gold last because this took a little bit to dry. And I will probably add the gold last just for time's sake. So let's get this down here. Now I've made these ATC cards. Um, in the round, I've whenever I say in the round, I think of Michael Jackson uh, with Billie Jean. <laughs> um, and I do this because I do want some of the glue on the outside. So I just take my paddle and I just squeeze it out. I want to get that that side there um, but I've done them with the um, ink box cards but they are they are fun to do if you just want a fun afternoon project um, sometime make some of these cards upside down. And then if I want to press this side, I just take another clean sheet. I'll fold it over and press it on the top. That way I don't catch a corner or I, you know, I don't see if I were to catch that like that, I could have ripped it up. So put a piece of paper over it then you save yourself a ripped card all right so that's done and you can make these on um, printed paper with fussy cut flowers I just chose today um, to make them with the watercolor ink I really like the way they they come out okay so that's done so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, use my Distress Ink and I'm just going to kind of go around the side here. And get that taken care of. And that's all there is to that. And then I just take my I have a cloth here. It has, you'll see what I'm going to do with this, what I do next. And I don't know if everybody does this, but this is how I preserve the top of my cards. And I do this with everything. If I glue down um, little pieces of ephemera on here, um, doesn't matter what I do. I always finish it off like this. But first I'm going to grab a saying. Um, I use shoe polish. Um but you want to get everything on here before you 
uh, get that shoe polish, you start working with the shoe polish. So again, I'm going to use a black saying, and you want these to be small, like that there, stay curious, because um, you don't want to see I could use this one life is good okay and then I just have to decide where I'm going to put that which is always a big decision I don't really I think I'll put it here that up. I can put it right down here. I'll put it right there. And then I have a white because I don't I want to have it um, a little more abstract and not so square. I have this white pen, this paint marker. Um, I'm getting used to this as well. I just got this. And all these new items that I've never used before. And you just dot it for the ink to come out. And then all I do is I just kind of go around it with the extra ink here. And then I just kind of soften these corners and just kind of just kind of play with it to get it to look a little wonky And again, you're going to just want to let that dry. Again, I'm just using the heat to speed up the process a little bit. But that will take a little bit to, um, to dry. So that appears to be, that appears to be dry. Okay. So now what you're going to do is I like to use um, a clear shoe polish. If I wanted to make this a little bit um, more distressed, you can take a brown shoe polish and you can go over the outside of it. Um, and it will add a little bit more color. I don't want to do that on this one. I can do, I do have a, another video that I can link um, showing, I believe I used the brown shoe polish on one. And you can see what that looks like. But these here, I just, I want them to be, you know, somewhat clean and neat. Um, because I'll be putting the gold trim on around. Okay. So this is just a clear, just a natural, clear shoe polish. And if the smell bothers you, you know, please wear a mask or whatever. The shoe polish really doesn't um, bother me. It does have a very distinct smell, but, and I just want to make sure again that this is, that this is dry. Um, so I just hope that it doesn't blend because I didn't give this enough time to dry. So I'm just kind of dabbing this for now. do see some of that little bit of green coming off. 
I don't want to get it on the other. I don't want to get it on. Watch me. I'm going to do this and I'll probably burst into flames. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry a little bit more. Um, and then I'm going to put the gold on and then we'll come back. Everything should be dry by then. I just don't want to, I don't want to smear it. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit longer. This one came out really good because I just let this dry um, before I worked at it. So this is the gold. And I'm going to put the gold on around the edges like I did here with this one. And unfortunately, you have to use your finger with this. And it does, it can get a little messy. Um, so you're just going to want to. Just try to use one finger if you can. And I don't mind if I get it, <coughs> excuse me, if I get it um, a little bit more in certain spots. I just think it gives it a, a nice look where it's not all uniformed. All right, so I'm going to go and wash my finger, okay? And then I'll be right back. All right, hands are clean. And um, it might take a little bit, depending on what kind of um, gold. Uh, this is a wax metallic finish that you use, but it does come off with a little scrubbing. And you do want to clean your fingers because you don't want to get gold anywhere else. So what I do after I put the gold on here is I flip it over and I just give it a good rub. Um, and then that way, some of the gold that's left over will come off onto the paper. Because again, I don't want, and I don't care if I actually like the look, how it kind of smudges around, but I just want to make sure that um, no gold is left over. Um, to smudge on any other section of where I'm working. So that's the only reason why I've got some paint on here. It's the only reason why I do that. Because, you know, if, if you've worked with this gold before, you know that once it smudges and it transfers, you cannot get it off. So I just like to make sure, see there's still some gold on there. And then I take my, I take my old dish cloth here and then I just give it a go around. And I just kind of, just kind of work it like this. And you can see that it, see most of it is, it's dried, it's on there, it's not going to come off. So that's why I do that. So going back to the um, page now for the shoe polish, because this should be dry by now. And if not, I'm just going to end up smudging it all over. So let's see. Yeah, it's dry. It's dry. So nothing is smudging. So now you can just, that green is still, but I think if you put a good base on this, there's some gold. Take it this way. Now this one, I put, um, I put the gold on after. So you're just going to have to kind of play and see what works, what doesn't work. 
So, but I like to, and you can see, I'm just kind of taking this and bringing it out towards the gold so it doesn't It doesn't get on. I just don't want that gold smudged. So you just have to be careful. And as the day goes on, you know, this will this will dry. So but I really like the looks. I really like the looks of these. And like I said, the um the shoe polish gives it a nice little shine. And it's, it's a nice protector. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Whoops. Get this on here. Um, I learned that from another gal. And I just, I just like the way they come out with the, with the shoe polish. So that is, um, those are my ATC cards for the challenge over at Scrimping Mommy on Facebook. And they're they're just fun. They're just fun to make. You can stuff them in a pocket in your junk journal. You could use them as an accent, you know, on a belly band um, in your journal. You could, um, this is a little bit shiny, so I would not write on this because your ink on a ballpoint pen will smear. Um, but you could put somebody's photo on the back here, if you have a, a black and white photo or just a family photo, you could cut that out and you could stuff them in, you know, little pockets um, and have photos on the back side. So there's a lot of things that you can do with these ATC cards. So I want to thank everyone for joining in today. Uh, if you like this video, I'd love to have you give me a thumbs up. I uh, also want to thank you again for viewing this, and I'd love to, if you're on Scrimping Mommy and you make these, please post them, um, because I'd love to see what you create as well. So I will see you in my next video, everyone, and have a great day. Bye-bye.